What's up folks? It is around 5.30 a.m. and um, I rolled out from the house this morning about a quarter after I guess it was. And it is brew day at the brewery today and I uh, thought I would give you a few updates. <clears throat> Hopefully I have the chance to do what I want to do today. I don't know how crazy it will be but uh, just rolled through Hardy's and got me a good old steak biscuit and uh, steak and egg with mayonnaise. Gotta have mayo and got my coffee going on so uh, yeah just gonna give you a few updates and uh, I don't know how long it's been so I threw a video up but uh, brewing's going great <clears throat> we really can't keep up with demand right now with the three of us brewing and the equipment we have and uh, all the functions they're having up at the winery it's just uh, they're wiping us out man it's, and you get that with a nano brewery even like I say, we're, we're trying to brew uh, at least two or three times a week as often as we can. Like I say, all of us have full-time jobs, so uh, we have doubled up and started doing some 20-gallon some brew days now, and we're looking at getting some uh, a couple of 27-gallon fermenters so we can dedicate those to the bigger batches and, and uh, save the, uh, the uh, smaller fermenters for our 10-gallon batches. So. Uh, Hopefully that'll happen before too long, but yeah, I just wanted to, I hope I have time when I get up here to show you a couple of things that I didn't get to last time I gave you the tour, and I just want, well, just one thing really, and uh, also just show you uh, what's going on with the expansion, I don't want to miss my road, um, uh, with the expansion, you know, and, and the upcoming, uh, what looks to be a 10 barrel system, so yeah, I'm going to eat my biscuit, and pay attention to the road here when I get on the highway and hopefully uh, you'll see something after this at the brewery later. So while I've got just a minute, uh, I did want to show you what I was talking about. I'm actually into the brew day and I always stir a couple of times during the mash and uh, you see there my target's 153 and I'm at 152. It takes a minute to get back up. Now it's recirculating after I stir. Uh, but uh, one thing I wanted to show you that we that the winery owns that we use <coughs> for sanitation is uh, this bad boy. And some of you may recognize it, some of you may not. It's an ozone machine, and uh, basically it takes this is regular tap water, cold tap water coming in, goes through this thing, and uh, basically it takes H two H two O and strips the hydrogen and adds an oxygen, so it's uh, pure ozone, and it's just got to water out. It's like a regular spigot and whatever you spray with that is contact sanitized and that's the handiest thing in the world especially you can imagine spraying out of a water hose and it's great for you know our uh, kegs uh, fermenters um, chill wizard uh, and right there it is just just a spray hose but yeah man it's it's the neatest thing in the world it makes cleanup uh, a little easier you don't have to mix a lot of crap and no iota for or star sand or whatever else people use but yeah ozone machine is the way to go i'm sure they're expensive i don't I have no idea what that one costs but uh cool little item check out my view this morning it's a beautiful morning here in the north carolina foothills it's supposed to be like in the mid 80s maybe upper 80s today a uh, whole lot less humid you can tell it this morning it's really nice and you can tell they've got some of the uh Grapes already covered for the they're getting to that point to be picked and the birds and the deer and everything starting to enjoy them so they've got some nets over part of them and I couldn't tell you what section is what grape but yeah that's my view and there is Skull Count Mountain for which part of the winery and the brewery is named after got a nice little mountain range to look at beautiful place that's where my wife and I got married way out there in that gazebo if you can see it about two and a half years ago and out here on the crush pad is where they uh, crush the grapes at harvest season but it's also where as you can see where they hold events and uh, man we've been going through the beer like I say you've got got this patio out here full and they'll have music and um, the beer is flowing we got a little kegerator we've built and we're using corny kegs to dispense from right now and we've got the op we've got the option to serve from commercial kegs as well but uh, I've got to go measure out some hops and get some other things done, but I did want to show you that. Hopefully in a little while I'll show you the expansion uh, 
which is that all this side over here this that section of the building is all new and up in there is where the brewery is going to be but I got to get busy and I'll show you show you all that here in a little bit so I thought I'd show you something really exciting I'm getting towards the end of the mash uh, I can't remember what I showed you on this first video about this thing but the mash ton recirculates out of here temperature is monitored by that probe right there and you can look at that dial too but it goes through here in through here there's a pump and a rims tube heating element comes back up through here the flow is controlled by this valve comes back up this line and recirculated through here and there's a half inch silicone hose in there and it wraps around it's about three foot long or so and does the recirculate and I just fogged all up but I'm at the end of my mash see right there my brewer timer 59 minutes so when it comes time to do the fly sparge, I've got my strike water already heated up to 200 degrees. And I've got 14 gallons of water, and I'm going to need about uh, six and a half, something like that, but I use the rest for cleaning. Six and a half gallons. But um, basically, what I'll do is <clears throat> shut this back a little bit to keep from pumping so much water in there from the get go. I'll open my sparge water valve, close my mash ton recirc valve, and then open up the uh, drain into the bowl kettle. And I've got some hops already in there, as you can see. It's a Mount Hood. This is a Rye IPA, and it's first wort hops. So I'll get that going and then back it off a little bit. And usually it takes about 45 minutes to an hour, somewhere along in there for um, to drain, to get up to 13 and a half gallons bowl volume. So uh, I'll try to keep this <clears throat> this flow out and this flow in. I'll regulate the, the sparge water, strike water. I mean, sparge water. I mean. I'm trying to think of too many things at one time. My sparge water, full blast here, but I'm regulating the flow coming back out of the pump here, so I'll cut that back to a minimum. And just keep an eye on my, let me turn my heat off. Keep an eye on my uh, volumes here and make sure I keep a nice little one or two inch level above my grain bed and rocking and rolling. Got all my hops weighed out already, got the fermenter sitting out. It's already been cleaned and sanitized, and the Chill Wizard's already been cleaned and sanitized. Got the oxygen ready. Ah, beautiful day at the office. Loving this weather. So while I'm draining into my bull kettle, I thought I would show you the expansion because it's not gonna it's be long before I'm things are crazy and cleaning and all that good stuff, and I probably don't want people to be in here and all that. But anyway. Here's the expansion and they've uh, added on from those double doors you see. The double doors are new and everything out is new. And I'll step right here. I'll show you the outside wall. Nice rocked wall all nice and neat. So all that expansion down to the end is new. And they've got a big garage door down there that you probably see there. Store the tractor and such as that. but. Uh, The exterior is pretty much done. Um, this part right here is going to be a new conference room. So they'll have a nice little meeting place with a beautiful view of the vineyards and the mountains. And uh, I think this should be the brew house, don't y'all? With this nice view. But uh, yeah, this room over here beside us where the double doors went to, that's all just going to be storage for uh, the patio heaters and chairs and tables and whatever. This is going to be the new barrel room. And I don't think I've ever showed you the existing barrel room. Uh, nice big area. For a barrel room, and they have glycol chillers here, so everything's temperature controlled. The rooms are temperature controlled by glycol, and their uh, fermenters will be 
Glyco controlled. And here I'm walking into this room with this big garage door. And I'm opening this little door so hopefully you can see a little more light in here. I'm sure that door right there works, but I don't want to be raising it and it fall out on the floor. But anyway, this is the future brew house, folks. And uh, I'll step out here and show you this side of it. Little dock door to the front of the building here. See my old red truck. This is the front of the, the winery, but from that little, actually that door was already there, but probably about right there to the left of the big door. Overall, that's the rest of the new addition. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the, the brew, Skull Camp Brewing, folks, right there in that section, and I better pay attention to not fall off of this. But, uh, man, I'm just loving this view. But yeah, um, I wish we could get a window. I'm gonna have to talk to the owner. Request a window on that on that wall right there. But uh, actually, I think the brew house is gonna be in that corner, if I remember correctly. Probably like caddy cornered, if I remember right. Uh, so we can have exhaust. It'll be a direct fire system. And the difference between the, I think I mentioned this, the difference between a seven and ten barrel system. I don't think they're, I think they'll go ahead and probably get a 10 barrel system because the cost, you know, is just, it's, uh, the cost isn't that great for that much more beer. So if that's a good way to put it. But anyway, yeah, that'll be a big garage door going into the barrel room. So uh, I was thinking there was going to be a door here, but I think they've decided to move it over here to give us more space and they, they've changed plans a couple of times. The existing barrel room is on the other side of that wall, but uh, they may be still going to put a door there in the middle, I'm thinking, and we'll have that corner and that corner for fermenters. And uh, then our cold room will be on the other side of that wall in the existing barrel room and it'll all be glyco chilled or temperature controlled and uh, I'm assuming the bright tanks and everything will go in there. I don't know all the plans. I can't remember every, all the details from our meetings we have, but yeah. Hopefully before too long, uh, we'll get the system ordered and nailed down uh, what we're gonna exactly get, and uh, that'll be it, so. Fun times, it's a lot of work. Uh, a lot of work, but it's, it's fun. But I'm going to get back at it. Hope you enjoyed the video and the little tour and what little bit I've showed you. But uh, get back out here and get to the Sabco system and tend to it. Um, questions, comments, as always, lay them on me. And probably got another 40 minutes or so and then I'll start boiling. Um, already got the burner going on the boil. Usually try to have it time to where by the time the uh, 13 and a half gallons is is there the uh, temperature is right at ball so don't have to waste any time we'll go ahead and show you the, the old barrel room up quick while the doors open back here should have it closed because it's all temperature control back here but uh this is where we've got all our fermenters sitting several chest freezers we've been used for temperature control and uh Grain storage is probably dark in here. I don't even know if you can see this, but uh, I may not even add this part to it. But our chest freezers for conditioning and uh, carbonation with a nice K connection setup. Which reminds me, I need to tend to that a little bit. Gotta go, folks. Uh, like I say, questions, comments, lay them on me later.